in Japan. Okay guys, so you know I have been all up in the air about whether or not I should go to Tokyo for just a few days to see my screen film, but then I was like, you know what, yellow. I knew I had made the right choice when I got bumped to Comfort Plus for the first time ever in my life, and apparently in Comfort Plus you get slippers, which I love. A little inspiration from Anthony Bourdain on the plane, and I thought this was fitting because he really inspired me to travel. Finally made it. That was the worst plane ride of my life, and I ended up puking my guts up so many times I can't even count. RIP to my insides. <coughs> I barely thought I was going to make it at some points. <coughs> Seriously contemplating my life choices. Also looking for the flusher. Found it. Man. Also, if you need a pee, here's some running water sounds in case you need some help. After about a 45 minute train ride, I finally arrived at my hotel and wow, I have never been so happy to see a place in my life. Look how gorgeous this resort is, my gosh. Well deserved after that flight, for sure, much needed. Hey guys, as you can see, I'm officially in Japan. Yes, you heard that right. I was gonna film like the whole thing, like getting here to my hotel, but <laughs> I have never been so sick in my entire life. I mean, I have flown this far before. I have been overseas this far. I do usually get a little jet lag. I'll have like, you know, I feel like crap the first couple of days and I'll just, you know, like normal jet lag. I thought I was gonna die. I obviously got jet lag and then I think that compounded and led to like a migraine headache, which if you've had them, you know, lights out. Like it was bad, really, really bad. I like projectile vomited three times, two, one right off the plane, which was, so lovely, throwing up tomato juice, do not recommend. Another one, when I met up with my friend that was thankfully a godsend and was gonna help me to my hotel, um, met up with her, was waiting in line because I was like, I think I should eat something and then had to immediately throw up again. <laughs> and then one more time after coming back to the hotel and sleeping for like 10 hours, woke up and projectile vomited one more time just for, you know, three times the charm. So anyway, I'm alive. That's a good thing. I have had an amazing shower and I feel 10 out of 10, so much better. Still not 100% at my peak, but 100% better than I was. I was over here thinking, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do anything this trip. I am so fucking sick. But the shower helped, the sleeping helped. I went back to sleep again after that third time and I've been sleeping for a good 13 hours. It's currently, four o'clock in the morning um but my time i think it's closer to like 2 p.m so that makes sense i woke up at like eight my time like normal like my body normally likes to do and obviously that was 3 a.m here so i tried to get back to sleep after that last round of uh, puking so i feel loads better now so hopefully i'll be able to um, shoot some content for you guys today and actually be alive i just wanted to go over how I got here and just I feel like my life lately has just been proof of the universe making way for what you want to do as long as it sees you working and as long as it sees you willing to take bold choices and big steps for yourself it's it will help you the rest of the way it'll meet you halfway this whole trip is so crazy to me because I feel like a lot of things were already in motion before I knew it, and that's a perfect example of how the universe works. A lot of the things that happened to me over the last year, I feel like was preparing me for this trip. So for example, my friend that lives here now, um, Christina, she's literally an angel. By the way, Christina, Christina packed me a lovely bag of snacks when I got off the plane as a gift, and I just could not thank her enough because she included this guy. And this guy saved my life at three o'clock in the morning because that's the normal time my body was like begging for caffeine because I'm a caffeine addict and 
I literally obviously have nothing and so I looked in the little gift bag and Christina bought me a canned coffee just for this occasion and I feel like if it wasn't for this canned coffee, I would, it would be toast. Like you wouldn't hear from me again. It would just be like, well, what happened to her? I don't know. She just died of caffeine withdrawal. So thank you for that. Christina, for example, was just like a little piece of the puzzle that was crazy to me because Christina is a client of mine. I met her last May, like almost a year ago now, and we just clicked, right? We just, one of those people who are just like, oh my God, I love this person. She goes back and forth. She lives in Tokyo sometimes and then she'll live in Atlanta sometimes. So I feel like even meeting her was a huge part. To have somebody living here currently, I have had friends that have lived here before, um, so they gave me a lot of good tips, which I really, really appreciate. Love you guys. But to have someone currently living here that can help you navigate, especially when you're first off the plane, so to speak, um, is huge. And so even meeting her almost a year ago, I feel like was preparing me for this now. And obviously I had no idea. I think I, I think we started filming in like, maybe around the same time, actually. Um, I know it was done by like June or July, so maybe it was about May that I was actually currently like filming it and working on it. Um, but obviously I had no idea like what film festivals I was going to enter in or if obviously if I would even win anything, have an honorable mention in anything. So I had no idea. So to meet somebody that goes back and forth and is living here right now when I needed to come was... Like that right there is just like the universe setting stuff up for you that it knows you're gonna need later. So that's what I was saying the other day about making sure you're paying attention to connections that you're making. Because even if they don't make sense right now, it might make sense in a year. And you'll be like, damn, like this is why I met this person. So like, that's how I feel with Christina. Like, you know, if I wouldn't have been paying attention, I could have just let that moment pass me by it could have just been like another client that I worked with and been like, okay, bye, you know, have a great day or whatever. And we could have never spoke again, but because we clicked and, and we followed up on continuing that connection, it set me up for now, which is when I needed her in my life. And that is wild to me. And I'm so grateful. Um, so that's a huge lesson is like pay attention to connections that you're making now because even though they might seem insignificant they might be huge later um because she is she's been such a huge help um you trying to figure everything out and get everything prepared to come because it was super last minute and that's the other thing too is that i just found this information out that i was uh, i knew that i had won back in november or december i can't remember but they did say well we're gonna have a screening but there's a lot of winners, so we have to really narrow down and don't don't expect to win. Like, we'll contact you if you're one of the ones we're gonna show for the actual screening of the winners. So I had no, I mean, I was just super grateful to win anything, um, and I ended up winning a lot of categories. But I did not expect like being a first time filmmaker i did not expect i knew that my film had a lot of heart and meant a lot to me but i could not fathom showing it to complete strangers and then having the same reaction to it so i just thought out of all of these people these amazing filmmakers probably that put in their projects i could not imagine like that mine would be one of the top ones they would want to show. That's wild to me. Um, and they did say it would be last minute, so they would contact everyone in January to let them know, and the screening would be at the end of January. So I knew it was coming, and if I would have even thought or fathomed that I would have been one they would have chosen, I would have prepared better, and I would have just gone out and booked my ticket then. But I had no idea, so I found out on my birthday um, this year that I was chosen to be screened and that in itself was huge. I cried and um, it was just a really, really good gift for me. And 
then I was in this tailspin of, I really want to go, right? But I had already booked out my, my calendar, as you guys know, has been mental lately, which I'm so grateful for. I've had tons of work, tons of um, clients, and it just is not conducive to taking like a week time out of, you know, my schedule because I have booked out like weeks to a month in advance sometimes. So I was in this weird place of like trying to figure out, can I actually feasibly do this? Can I actually feasibly go to Japan? And originally I had a client on the 25th and my screening is on the 27th, which is today. I also had a friend that was coming in town like next week. So it was a really, really short window. The thing is too, when you travel here, you lose a day. So if you're watching this in America right now, it's already tomorrow here in Japan. So today is the 27th there for you guys. It's the 26th. And I thought about that because I would have had to, I had a client on the 25th. I would have had to fly out on the 26th and then technically I wouldn't be arriving until the 27th, which is the day of my screening. I had like four days, but two of them would have been for travel, right? So I was just trying to figure out if that was even worth my efforts coming and the money coming and all of this stuff. And for a minute I was like, no, like this doesn't make any sense. Like I'm, this is just, it's just too last minute. It's too, um, too expensive, too last minute, too all of these things, all of the normal excuses that people will say to figure out reasons not to go on major trips of their life. I had kind of ruled it out, but this little like voice in me just kept on, it kept on like nagging at me. And I just really, really wanted to come. Like I felt like I needed to be here. Um, so I was really in a weird place where I was just like, I really, really want to go. I really want to go. I just don't think it's possible. I don't think it's smart. I don't think it's worth it. All of these things. Right. Uh, and then I talked to some people that are close to me. Obviously, I have amazing people in my life and everyone was like, go, you know, just fucking go. Like, who cares if you have two days? Like, just go because this is such a huge deal. When is this ever gonna happen again? Which hopefully it does, but it's a huge first thing. You know, this is a huge first step for me. It's a huge first, it's my first film, first project that I, was super important to me and I won for it and they're showing it to hundreds of strangers. This is another step where I can tell that the universe just like made way for me because I got a text. It was like a few days before or a few days after I'd find out. I think it was like, I booked this literally like a week before now. So that's crazy. But I found out that my clients that I had had on the 25th actually needed to push back so they weren't going to be able to shoot on the 25th anymore. And I was like, seriously? Like, I didn't even have to lift a finger because I didn't want to, they were a new client, so I wasn't going to um, risk losing, you know, a new client for something. I wasn't going to back out. I, I'm not, I don't cancel. But it was like, it was like the universe was like, you know what, if this is the one thing on your schedule that is holding you back from making this huge decision, if this is the one thing that is keeping you from going, let me just remove that for you. Like, I didn't have to do anything. Like, they did it. And so, after that, I was kind of like, I would be literally an idiot not to come, right? Like, I feel like that was a sign. I feel like that was a sign from the universe being like, this was the thing that you were using as an excuse to not go. Let me just, like, now that's not a problem, so pack your fucking bags, you know? And that's what I did. I booked the ticket that day because I just felt like that was like an answer to what I wanted and it's something I've been talking about. Like, I really wanna go, I feel like I need to be there, I feel like I need to be there. And the universe just removed the obstacle for, for me. Another example of like something that could have happened and I could have still come up with like 10 other excuses why not to be here. But I didn't. I took that as a hard sign that I needed to be here and there was no more excuses and pack your fucking bags. Girl, you're going to Tokyo. So here I am in Tokyo. Um, it's the morning of my screening. It's five o'clock in the morning. Love that for me. Um, 
and I'm so grateful. This is just like another small thing, but I noticed on my um, Instagram, this was a few days ago, like I think a day before I left to come, but I noticed that I had had some angel numbers show up on my like followers and post area of my work Instagram. So it was like 444 and 777. And if you know angel numbers, that in itself was another sign. Like both of those numbers are literally perfect for what I have going on right now. Uh, if you don't know about them, 444 is kind of like the rebel of the angel numbers and it's just really pushing for change and growth and uncomfortable growth sometimes and just like really pushing out of your comfort zone and making bold choices and that is like what this was about is a bold ass choice and people that make bold ass choices get rewarded and i'm seeing that i'm like this is how it works like this is how manifestation works this is how like if you do things that are bold and like decisions that are just best for you constantly like over and over and over you're gonna get there but that's what i mean by like the universe has to see you working and then 777 is obviously just like it's a lucky number and it also is just like you're on the right path experiencing something alone uh which was another big thing because nobody could come with me obviously because it's so last minute i was like <laughs> telling people like a week before like hey do you want to go to japan with me next week like you know because I already had to be here. I have a hotel, so it's just like, you know, if anybody wants to come, but like, obviously people have lives and jobs and people can't just uproot their lives and come to Japan. But I can, so here I am alone. And that was just another big sign for me as well. Like, this is maybe something I was meant to do on my own, um, an experience on my own. And I've had lots of help uh, which I'm so grateful for and but overall this trip is a journey for me a journey alone and yeah that's pretty fucking cool it's pretty rad man so I'm in really really good spirits now that I'm not on my deathbed I'm gonna try to you know bring some content to you guys every day and show you guys what's going on here um look out for funny stuff because i it's just a very different world here my toilet seat is heated so yeah <laughs> it's good time so i love you all um thank you for supporting me thank you to everyone that pushed me to come love you <laughs>